Welcome to the Energize in America podcast, where we talk all things energy and why we need it, our business communities in life. So today we're sitting down with John Hevela again and Chad Bruckemeyer, our CFO, for those who forgot. Boy, it's been a bit, Chad, since you joined us. It has been a while. Yeah. So we're excited. We're actually, like some really cool people talk about coming from an undisclosed location, but we'll just say we're in Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> but but this has been a challenge for an idiot like me. I don't know if we're in Kansas City. Kansas, I think, is where we are right now. But our training was in Kansas City, Missouri. Do I got that correct? And we've passed over the border quite Numerous a few times. times. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been hearing. Luckily, here. we have GPS nowadays that <laughs> tells us where, where we're at because we're clueless. <laughs> so we, we've been at a really cool conference and we're hearing a ton about company culture. So we kind of wanted to have a roundtable here and, and recap our training. So, John, we are you cultured out after these three days of intense conversation or where are you at? No, I am absolutely not cultured out. Culture is a huge thing to me. But what what I'd like to talk about maybe a little bit first is to culture can be such a buzzword like culture, smulture, you know, what does that mean? So I would like to ask your definition of what does culture mean to Shane? And then maybe what does culture mean to Chad? And then I'll give you what my definition of culture is and we'll see where that leads. Well, I, I think for me, culture is literally just the act of taking care of people around you uh, as far as business goes that's that's as basic as like people talk about fun events um you know all these ideas of games you can play and so on and so forth but at the end of the day if you don't truly care about the people you work with you can at, you don't have a culture so culture is truly caring about the people you're with i agree chad what do you think i agree with shane to add on to what shane said culture also gives people the ability to make decisions on their own it's not somebody that we're not leaders that you know put a thumb over people and not give them the chance to make a decision we have a culture that allows people to make a decision kind of work on their own come up with their own ideas support others ask for support ask questions that's uh, that's another power to culture in my eyes yeah, I, I agree with both of them definitions for sure. And a little bit deeper, I just was just having an animated conversation with the guy. I call it animated, but we we're having a difference of opinion. And his opinion was that you need to put your customer first. Like if you have a customer first based organization, then you'll be successful. And I disagree. I said, you got to take care of your people first. And if you take care, good care of your people, a natural byproduct of that, they'll take care of the customer. But that's that's really easy to say. It's a whole other thing to act on, right? And especially think about the people that we know who are in really small business. And I, I remember this in a very living way when Westcom was a bit smaller, that, it, that those are conflicting things if you're not thinking about it properly until you realize that if I take care of my people, they're going to take care of my client. And then it becomes our people, our client, and we all win together. Exactly. How did that person respond to your rebuttal? He obviously didn't like well, it. Well, Beans, I'm such a wordsmith and a great debater that I think he came around and actually or it was at least able to see the perspective that I was giving. And, and I don't disagree. We all we all understand we have to take care of our clients, right? That's that's obviously said. But not at the expense of our people. So when you, when you think about that, what, what does it mean that you would actually take care of your client at the expense of your people? Well, I th the, the, that little story, and we won't go into too many details, but I think that illustrates it beautifully as some folks on our team went out on what was it, a Thanksgiving weekend? And did some work up in a tower and there's winds blowing and howling and I don't know how remember how cold it was. And we did, but it was in North Dakota, could, so you can just say it was below zero. Correct. Right. So and you know the story better than me, but that to me illustrates how you stand up for your people and you push back against the client because you need to take care of your people instead of telling your guys, 
you know, well, tell the story. Well, it's that, a great that story. Was, that was an interesting one because it it kind of, it was after COVID <laughs> and we had a client reach out to us and they were going back in time and looking over some invoices and they were concerned that a particular project could cost in their mind too much money. And so they set up a conference call with their corporate team, their local team and us to discuss why this project had cost so much money. And there was all kinds of dynamics in it and clearly Westcom could have done better. The client had also just released an annual earnings call and had just given their employees, which numbered in the hundreds, uh, very, very large bonuses for putting up with COVID. Uh, as you guys recall, Westcom during that time did not have a fun arena. And we're very fortunate that we came out on the flip side of it okay and that our team stood with us. But it, when when this gal started talking about uh, the cost of having our guy on the top of a tower on Thanksgiving Day, and the conversation kept getting pushed towards Westcom just cost too much, cost too much, cost too much. I was trying to get her to understand the word value. And so I finally just asked her where she was on Thanksgiving. And it turns out she was with her family enjoying her turkey dinner. Our employee had, because there was a scheduling nightmare on the producer's part, was spending his Thanksgiving 50 feet in the air on top of a tower where you're not thinking about Thanksgiving. You well, you're probably are that day, but you're really thinking about how can I get off this thing, right? It's cold, it's windy and everything else. And I just, I had this deep sense within me that she was not understanding what an employee actually does and what they, what they're, what they put up with. And after several like uh, gentle conversations, trying to understand the word value, I, it didn't turn into heated by any means. I felt heated, but I just simply told her that, you know, how it is with employees. Like I'm not, I'm actually not writing a single penny off of this invoice because this individual deserves even more than what I build you for. Because keep in mind, like your communication tower is important, but is that more important than his family? Why is your family more important than your communication tower? But for my employee, his family isn't. That's not right. So in order for him to do that, we have to compensate him fairly. And the conversation ended and it, it very cordially. And I got to hand it to the client because they came around. They've seen that issue. Subsequent to that, that was about a year and a half to well, two years yep. ago, almost a year and a half ago. Um, since then, we've continued to work for that client. We've actually had more work. And with that specific individual in that company, the, the comments are usually made that whatever you do, I don't want to hear from your boss, Shane. <laughs> and, and, and it's just simply because he realized like it was he wasn't thinking about that properly. And that that is right. I guess that's an example of, of caring more about your team than the client. It, right. It, that 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 puts it all in a nice little package in my mind. Like that's one example of how that takes place. And at the end of the day, we did take care of the client by taking care of our person. Right. And you know what, what's interesting about that, John, is that when I was stuck on that phone call, I was getting really upset. Like, how can this person not see it? And then it became clear that I have done a poor job in showing that I truly care about these employees and show the real worth of them. Because once I did it, the client understood it. Right. But that's up to us as business owners or business leaders to do that job of showcasing how great our clients are or, or how good our employees are. We actually had this conversation this morning with a client push back on a rate increase. And this particular client for this particular division of our work is just not understanding that folks deserve to be paid X amount of dollars. And I'm not going to hire people that I can't pay them that dollar amount. If you don't see that value, that's fine. Go somewhere else. And I'm sure you're going to get service elsewhere. But if you're going to do business with Westcom, we have awesome people who deserve to be paid fairly. That's really not all that different in a corporate environment. You know, it's it's funny how that disconnect can happen. And it's our job to highlight it. Absolutely. But it, it's easy to say and hard to do. The easy thing to do is say, oh, we apologize, Mr. Client, that our guys took an extra three hours. Um, I will have a talk with them and we, I will make sure that that never happens again. And we appreciate your business and thank you. Have a nice Thanksgiving. Right. That's the easy thing to do. Then you will have a talk with the guys out in the field. And yeah. Um, and and if that's truly as basic as it was that we had just taken two, you know, three right. extra hours, that's probably how the conversation would have went. Right. But yeah, because it was a little deeper. But Chad, that must drive you crazy on the finance. And um, I mean, how do you feel about that taking care of the customer versus a 
the employee. Well, as you guys were talking about that example, I couldn't help but think about our Christmas party when a client actually wanted to come to our Christmas party down in the Permian. And that speaks a lot to the culture of our employees and how they work out in the field. The client wants to be around our employees and partake in our culture. I think from a, I think from a, a employee culture standpoint, I think it drives additional value to a client. And to your point, there are some clients that just don't see it that way. They're worried about a number, not worried about a person. And that's not who Westcom is. Right. And it's so now in our business life, we actually talk a lot about that when we're looking for new clients that are they going to align with our opinion on this? And and it's pretty basic, right? Um, Within a few minutes of meeting with somebody, you can tell that they're either in it for themselves or they're in it for the common good. And that sounds socialistic and liberal to talk about whatever else. But at the end of the day, guys, it literally everyone likes to be cared about. That's really not that's not a political statement. It's not a anything it's people like to be cared about. And so if we meet a client and it's all about the number, it's all about how quickly it can get done or whatever, and we don't have an opportunity to talk about our team and how they're proud of what they do. We I heard a great uh, quote this week that somebody said, you know, not only do we know what we're doing, but we're very good at it. And I thought, you know, that's like an important saying when we're out with clients, like we with confidence, we know what we're doing. And oh, by the way, we're really good at it and going with that amount of confidence. And they usually will embrace it and they can catch on pretty. It rubs off. Yeah, it rubs off when you when you're thinking of the culture and this example of taking care of employees more than the client or putting that's not true, putting the employee than the client, right? And there's so many LinkedIn articles and different research on that. But uh, what does the marketplace expect? What do the, when you're out, John, for instance, hiring employees or recruiting employees, what do they expect? Do you get into that conversation with them? Absolutely. Everybody has a story. And if you take 20 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, five minutes, and ask a few questions about well, tell me your story. I see you're employed at XYZ company. What's making you think about moving? Well, they told me that they would check in with me in six months, and now it's been a year and a half, and I've never talked to anybody. Well, it's pretty obvious that it could be they're really busy, give them the benefit of the doubt, but if they truly cared about the person, they would take the time to check in with them. In fact, I heard one guy told me this week that what they do at their company is they have the employee schedule his check-in with his manager. So he sends the email out saying, hey, it's time for my check-in. Here's what works for my schedule. And it's scheduled that way. And then the manager shows value in that person by showing up that day prepared to have a conversation with that person. You know, there's just all kinds of little details and things that that maybe we're doing already, but how can we do it a little bit better? Sure. But something as simple as that, I, I I don't know how many times I've heard that exact thing that they told me they would check in with me. They say review, and I, I don't like the word review, right? right? But some sort of communication with the person, hey, how you doing? How's your job going? Do you like it? What can we do better? Are we paying you enough? Are you happy with your compensation? Are the benefits working for you? You know, all all basic things that everybody gets up and goes to work for. So when you're 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 hearing that the marketplace demands this, but Chad, doesn't culture come at a cost? Doesn't this cost us something to do? How do we navigate that? It does come at a cost, but the benefits with employee engagement, people that want to go climb that tower when it's 30 below, people that want to work on New Year's or people that are potentially working on Memorial Day weekend. Or what just happened on Easter weekend. Right, Easter weekend, a a full Saturday for four people. It it does come at a cost, but it also shows commitment from the company to the employee and from the employee back to the company. And I think, you know, uh, yes, it comes at a cost and yes, there's a benefit. But when I go back to the word culture and how it's just taking care of people, there's there's this weird thing that happens 
I had the pleasure, and you, I believe you were in North Dakota with me at the last quarterly. Yes. Sorry, I get yes. the dates start falling together. But when we were in North Dakota at the quarterly safety meeting that we have, right? It's a safety meeting and then an update meeting. And we're at the Watford City uh, Rough Rider Center. I don't know, was there 60, 70 people yep. there? Just an awesome group of guys that we're all hanging out, visiting and do a little presentation and talk about things. And the next morning I said, good morning to a particular employee who's in his late fifties, if I, if I recall correctly, and maybe mid fifties, doesn't matter. Say good morning to him. Um, that afternoon, we got to head back to our other office. So I took off and I think that night uh, get a text message that said individual had a stroke and this is somebody who had just completed his fourth year of service like he's at four years two days and the 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 thing that comes to me when i hear that he had a stroke was the last four christmas parties or the last four quarterly events where not only did i because I already know who he is. I work with him, right? I've seen him in the shop, said good morning. He said good morning. In fact, that day before, I helped him pull some wire over to a cabinet. He was working on a trailer uh, situation. And, like, we worked together. The very next day, he's in a stroke situation, right? Um, and so, of course, I automatically think about him. But right behind it, I'm thinking, wait a second. That's right. His wife, who's just a sweet gal, talks about their grandkids all the time. You know, by the way, they take care of their grandkids due to a family dynamic issue. And I think within like 24 hours of us finding out about this, and it was just a random thing, like, hey, guys, we should pull some money together for our fellow employee. I had people from the Permian, right? This is in North Dakota, the Bakken, people that have never met said individual asking to have money taken out of their check to give to him and his family. And, and money isn't going to make him heal. That's not that's not at all going to make them heal. But in a small way, you take a little bit away of the stress. Right. And oh, by the way, along the way, for the last 10 years, I don't know, we've probably spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on our disability plan. And the insurance company has come out smelling like a rose and we haven't gotten tons out of it. Right. But did it not prove that that was a wise investment because now him and his family are at least taken care of in some degree. But that experience just reminded me that, yes, it might come at a cost. Yes, there might be a benefit even in expending the cost, but at the end of the day, somebody was taken care of, and that's all that matters. The and numbers, they work out. And I don't know, how did you feel with that whole situation? It was remarkable. I think I, I told you that maybe in an email or in a conversation that I feel, uh, I, I don't even know what the right verbiage is overwhelmed even to to work at a company where people care about each other that much because my experience up to this point is i i haven't had that experience you know i came from a large corporation where i was check number 96941 and that's literally what i was there was no one of the reasons i left there is they hired a guy he moved his family across the country to work two days after he started they had a big layoff and they laid off a bunch of people and this guy was one of them well you can't tell me that they didn't know two days before that this was going to happen yet they allowed somebody to take his family uproot them move them across the country buy a house start getting established and then lay them off that that is about a dollar and cents decision right so caring about people is this inherent thing that you can't fake, you can't make up, you can't manufacture. It's inherent in us. And that's why I get a little bit sensitive when I hear that there's a cost or a benefit to it, because it, yeah. the, the, those are true things. Right. But it can't you can't make um, you, you can't buy yourself into caring about somebody and you can't sell yourself into caring about somebody. You either do or you don't. And I think behind that word care comes a very important word of trust. In order to care about somebody, you first have to trust them, right? And that's that's where it just then organically, naturally, however, whatever word you use, it just happens. But Chad, you came from a from retail background and that was a larger company. Was it different for you at Westcom compared to where you were? The the retail company that I came from also had a great culture. So I, 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 a lot of times compare the Westcom culture to that culture. I was impacted at one point in my life and the same thing happened to me where 
the company and employees pooled together money, uh, you know, personal belongings to help me and my family out. So it's it's super important to me to work for a company that takes care of people like that. With with working at Westcom, being lucky enough to be on the leadership team, I'm not surprised that the company banded together and took care of the employee like that. I sit in a lot of a lot of conversations that we talk about certain initiatives, and it always comes back to the people. How does it impact the people? Our, our health insurance. How does it impact the people? Many different things within the company. It's how is it going to impact people, their life, their personal paycheck. It's it's it does come at a there's a dollar value to it, but I think it comes, it's returned, you know, tenfold. For sure. But what do you think? So we were just at this conference this week and I, I made the comment, I think it was last night before we uh, went to bed that, you know, it was my opinion. Everyone at this conference was of an older generation uh, and I'm talking myself and older. And there was one particular round table I was in where the person said, how do we deal with these young, lazy people who don't want to work? It was a little HR round table that I had attended. And I challenged this woman. I said, well, how many people from your company can? She said, well, there's five of us and they all work in HR. And she was the youngest of the five and she was 52 years old. And she was complaining that they have a landscape company, 900 employees doing landscaping. And they're getting irritated because they can't get people to send in a resume. And my response was, well, yeah, you're never going to get a landscaper to send in a resume. Um, that's not who they are. Like, how dare you even be upset by that, right? Uh, and just in this conversation, it always also reminded to me how we have to embrace the younger generation. But what did, what did you see this week when you think about the differences in people and the need to embrace people? Is it, am I, am I on, are we, are we on the same page on that or where, where are you leaving it? Yeah. I mean, I, I also went to a, a culture session. I, I could relate to some of the stuff they talked about, but I actually made a note on, on my notebook that John needs to do a presentation and present Westcom's culture. It's, it, it just feels different. And to your point, I feel like we resonate with a, a younger group because of the things we do like a podcast and social media and reaching out to, to individuals that actually access that stuff to find a place where they want to work. So I think that stuff is super important that we continue to do that. And we have even within finance, I get I get applicants that have zero finance experience and it that doesn't it doesn't matter. I don't throw that resume away. There are some times where we don't actually get a resume. We just get an email and we're willing to talk to the person because they have a story and they might be a culture fit. And it's somebody that we can help grow within the company. Yeah, I think the the podcast thing and just meeting people where they are is so important. And as we go forward, we have to be willing to embrace those items because even I think our first podcast we did, it's not always comfortable. Right. Right. And right. I think we even talked about this week that podcasts are not comfortable, but it turns out we're not doing them to make ourselves movie stars. Right. Or I guess it won't be movie. <laughs> right. Radio show personalities. We're not the next Rush Limbaugh. And so who cares? Right. We're just sitting down and hopefully what we're doing is, exposing a bit of what who Westcom is, but more importantly, sharing with all these people around, frankly, the world that listen, around the world about what it just looks like and how it can work out. You, you're not going to do this and become all a multi-billionaire person if you care about people. That's probably not going to happen. That's not the intent of this. Right? Exactly, right. Right? right? But you can share that it does work. Everyone can make a good living. And oh, by the way, everyone can be content with their job and good things can come. But what did you see, John, this week? Well, I, there's one phrase that that stuck in my head, and again, you know, we we me and you have had this discussion before about fluffy, right? Like pie in the sky, fluffy stuff. But I I feel like all pie in the sky, fluffy stuff, you can boil it down and bring it to reality. And this word engagement, we want people to be engaged, right? What does what does engagement mean? And this one of the presenters this week said that engagement means that we're showing up with passion and purpose. And I thought that was a great way to describe engagement. And the other thing about it is what engages me is different from what engages you or Chad or the 18 year old that's graduating from high school and wants to come work at Westcom. So our job 
is to figure out what inspires, what engages the 18 year old. And a 401k with a 6% match, which is important to me as I look at retirement in the next 15 years or so, but an 18 year old might not grab them the same way it grabs me. And it's interesting when I talk to people about benefits, for example, that's one thing. Some people are just blown out of the water with a 401k. And other people are like, yeah, okay, but really, what 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 do you what do you got to offer? Right. So I think that's the key about this. What makes me show up with passion and purpose? What makes the 18-year-old show up with passion and purpose? Yeah, I really liked the comments about how I heard it a couple of times this week that just because it's a great place to retire from doesn't make it a, make it a great place to work at. Exactly. And we got to remember that. So it kind of brings me back to that young conversation we were just having that, you know, in order to always find people where they are, I think they all need a representation or a voice. They need to be heard. And so what, what I really am just so excited about this week specifically, if there was one overarching like cool thing that happened, is we brought an employee with who is not on our leadership team, is not a manager. I guess he's a supervisor, but he's not he's not a high rank whatever, right? But he's been with us for a super long time. And he attended every single culture session there was. And he came back bringing with good stuff. And oh, by the way, he can now go home and relate to everyone else in his peer group. And they're going to listen to him, not us. Absolutely. And I hope we can remember that going forward, that when we go to trainings and education and opportunities, it's funny because one of our core values, create opportunities, another one, empower people, right? And we we can think that we're doing a good job with it, guys. But how many times do we go on an opportunity, like an education or a seminar or whatever? Who are we going with, typically? It's just natural to run with the leadership team, right? And meanwhile, what are we doing? We're not the ones with the boots on the ground half the time. I mean, we are in our respective arenas. But I just thought that was like one thing. If I could, if I could visit with another business owner and they were getting ready to sign up for a leadership training or a culture training or whatever business venture thing they're going on, grab somebody outside of your normal leadership team in that demographic and haul them along because they're the ones who will challenge you. They'll push you. And I mean, he has made so many cool little one-handed comments, some of them very... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's been entertaining. We could say that for a right. Some questionable, but even <laughs> you guys, even the the fact that going back to culture when we're traveling this week, what did we do yesterday? We go and play pickleball. And yep. Guess who plays? Dustin, right? Somebody who typically isn't traveling with us, and typically we don't get that opportunity. So it also humanizes who we are, so that he can talk about that in the future as well. So I, I think that was just one one other cool little thing that happened. But over over and above all of it, we've had three intense days. What are you hoping you can take back to your team, Chad? Anything stand out? Yeah, I think it's just to, to lead with almost with the team and not not feel like you're leading the team themselves. That's awesome. Lead with the team. What about you, John? Well, similar to what Chad said, I heard a lot, and I, and I believe it's true that the leaders have to set the example of what we want to be. And what we want to be is servant style leaders. I, like I have a list of these little initiatives that we're going to sift through and decide, yes, let's try this one. This one sounds great. This one, maybe not, whatever. But uh, for example, one little one is I was, I was sitting next to a lady today and she said that they have an idea committee. And this idea committee is a group of people that meet once a month and they get to spend up to $200 per idea. There's no management can be involved in it. And if they decide it's a good idea, they get to do it and implement it. And she said, you walk around, this was a factory setting. Every time they do it, they, they print out a little yellow sheet. And she said, there's all these little yellow sheets plastered all over the this factory because people are coming up with really good ideas because what those closest to the action can make the best decisions about what they're doing they don't need some manager to come in and say hey you should do this oftentimes they need to be empowered enough to make that decision spend a certain amount of money and make their lives better 
you said that, you know, uh, leaders, how do you say that? Like, uh, you want to make sure that we follow the same path as, as the leaders or as the, I can't remember exactly how you said that, but what, how do we do that as we grow? So in other words, you know, um, Jeremy and I, 10 years ago, we're, we were different and Westcom was different 10 years ago. We've tried to maintain this semblance of who Westcom is or this identity of who Westcom is, but how do we maintain that as we go forward? You find the right people. It, it's as simple as I've said that, you know, before, when I first came to work here, I was like, wow, Westcom is the greatest company in the world. Everybody in the world should come work here. To my thinking has evolved to Westcom is the best company in the world for the right people. So making sure that we find the right people that have the same values, that believe in our mission, that believe in our core values, then, then we don't have to worry about it. And it'll be inherent and natural in them to continue doing what we're doing, no matter how big we get. Hmm. Interesting. Do you agree with that, Chad? Yeah, I do. One thing I learned is I think some people call them self-managed teams. And I think John made that point earlier where the, where there's a team that is working on a specific item. In this case, I'm thinking of a culture issue or something that needs to be enhanced from a culture standpoint. It doesn't need to have a leader on the team in some ways, probably bogging things down and making people uncomfortable to say how they feel. So that, that was one takeaway is in, empower our people to work within a team without a leader, uh, somebody on the leadership mm -hmm. team on the team to come up with ideas and, and fix something or make something better from a culture standpoint. Yeah, I think we've seen that. Like on our safety committee, we used to have a bunch of managers on there and we realized quickly, like uh, there was no voice for somebody to bring something up because they would go tell the manager, the manager would be like, not listening. That was your issue. We're kind of forward or whatever the situation was, right? So now just employees on that on that team we get way more success from it. But yeah, we can definitely expand that and go further. I think for me, when I leave here, <clears throat> you know, beyond just make, make sure you bring the right people to a conference, because this conference was by far for me, the best one I've ever been to. Yeah. Um, bring the right people. But then also, culture is work. It is work to care about people. There's no spreadsheet. There's no sale. There's no, it, it, it's something that must be deep within you. And if you don't have that within you, then you need some time in self-reflection. And I, I wish you luck in that one. Because I, I think, you know, may, maybe it's because I just got done with the North Dakota trip and the North Dakota situation with the stroke. And um, subsequently, I've seen some other things going on within our company where I've seen this care is like truly great. I mean, we just had one of our gals lose her mother in finance. Mm -hmm. And it, you, can, you can almost feel the hurt amongst everybody. And through that, you're just like, wow. That that's that's really really cool, and I hope we can always do that. But in order to do it, something within each one of us doesn't matter how many conferences you go to, they you you still have to care. 